My name is Victor Sira, and I am here to talk with you as today about uh, String View. So, uh, back in July, this happened. <laughs> and my friend Simon tweeted this, and ironically, the same thing happened to me. So I'm just gonna roll with it. So just in case you're confused, uh, here's a roadmap for this week. You're in uh, uh, string view, the string view talk. Hopefully you're in the right room. And this is the part two of N for talking about string views. Don't worry if you uh, haven't seen the previous version of this talk. Um, I'm gonna build on it and um, you're not gonna miss out on any details because I, I, it's just an improved version of uh, a previous talk by the same title. And I hope you're properly caffeinated and ready to go and start with a very uplifting uh, talk, as you can probably guess by the title. Uh, so why are we talking about string view? Um, why are we talking about strings? Have we really exhausted all the cool template talks and topics? Uh, well, we kind of have to, because it would be nice if we could have a single unified standard type to talk and use strings throughout our application. Well, you might say we have standard string for that, but unless you're programming like a, window, like a service or uh, some kind of uh, utility application without a graphical user interface or a very deep interaction with system APIs, then you really cannot use standard string throughout your application. So you end up using multiple types of strings uh, in your application if you're, uh, you have a, some kind of platform dependent uh, uh, GUI or even if you're using some kind of cross-platform uh, GUI framework like Qt or WX widgets or something like that. So you end up with something like this basically. Um, be it uh, com strings or uh, ATL strings or MFC strings, um, Qt, what, if, what have you. Uh, the modern Windows runtime platform string. And you basically, let's call, depending on your platform and your background and your uh, historical requirements for your application, you end up with something like, uh, let's call it X string a platform dependent or a framework dependent string type, and a standard string that you might want to use throughout the platform independent part of the code and in the model of your applications. So depending on, the, on your string type, you might have questions uh, that you might need to consider while using that custom string type. Uh, does it support small string optimization? Uh, does it support copy and write? That is, is it thread safe? Does it support configurable charter traits? Uh, does it support a custom allocator? Um, does it play nice with string literals? Uh, can it be used in context per context? Does it have proper support for encodings and Unicode and system locales? All kind of complicated questions. And of course, there isn't a perfect string out class out there ready to use. Uh, or maybe there is. Uh, I just found this project on GitHub while, while uh, uh, scrambling for details. Apparently there's a super string class that's very, very efficient in some scenarios and uses some kind of rope data structure underneath or don't know much about it. Um, but anyway, so when that when up with something like this, uh, our X string, let's call it class. We have our standard string in our platform independent code. And we have to bind those together and use some kind of common denominator to interop with it, uh, within those uh, string types. So uh, we have, we might have uh, functions that use both string types. Uh, we might have to make some unnecessary copies and copy move data around and um, yeah, we, we might have some weird parts of the application that we'll need to translate and transfer string data between our platform independent parts and our um, 
GUI framework or platform dependent parts of the application. But we call that glue code and it's okay, you can live with it. We can try to make it as narrow as possible, this uh, layer uh, within our application. And we can live for a while with this kind of situation. But as our application grows and we develop it, we start to build up and accumulate a set of uh, utilities and string algorithms and helpers. And what do we do in this case? Do we restrict ourselves to uh, implement those algorithms uh, on, on top of standard string and being unable to use them straight out in the platform dependent parts of our application where we have to deal with our custom string type? Or do we implement them again in uh, the platform uh, dependent uh, string type? Or do we need to somehow resort to some common denominator scenario and uh, implement all our string utilities and algorithms uh, taking uh, const char star or something like that, a common denominator kind of thing. But we lose uh, the type safety and uh, the expressiveness and uh, the, the full power of the type system itself. And as we get on to modern C++, uh, we encounter string view and we have to answer ourselves, is string view the answer to all our string problems? And we have to explore our options together regarding this. But first, let's get to know each other a little better. And I, 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 want, I want to probe the room a little bit. Uh, how many of you are still stuck on some old compiler? Okay, yeah, it's better than I expected. Uh, how about C++ 11? Oh, way better. 14? And let's be brave. Uh, far fewer hands. But still, uh, encouraging. <laughs> so, just in case you're not there yet, um, there are alternatives. We do have uh, properly aligned interfaces similar to string view. Uh, for example, in app sale, we have some older implementations like string piece from Google, uh, string ref from LLVM, um, boost string ref, and foley range. So we've been doing this for a while as a community. Uh, we're just now barely trying to standardize on this and establish best practices and see what else we can figure out about the good and the bad things of using such a vocabulary type as string view, since now it's a standard type. So we've been doing this in some form or another. I wanna spend just a little bit of time to um, tell you about um, the uh, AppSale project that uh, debuted exactly one year ago uh, here at CPPCon. Uh, how many of you have heard of AppSail? Okay, a good fair amount, not all of you. Uh, you should really check it out, it's a cool project. Um, basically, uh, Google open sourced a bunch of their foundational uh, library types and utilities. And the cool thing about it is that it's C++ 11 slash 14 compatible and you can get new functionality that it's implemented in a, with a lower requirement for a compiler support and basically try out new features even, even, even if your compiler isn't there yet. So uh, it's an open source collection of uh, library utilities. Um, uh, they're dog fooding it, so it's not something just uh, like a hobby or experiment. It's actually production ready and it's not meant to be a competitor uh, for the standard library, it's I actually meant as a, a transitional crutch for people that need to try out uh, new functionality until they're ready to upgrade their tool chain. And there's one more thing that I like about uh, AppSail, and that is uh, it very much reminds me of the Guru of the Week series uh, back in the day. Uh, if you remember the Herb Sutter's series of uh, gotchas and questions. Uh, Absel run, uh, the AppSale blog runs something similar to that. And they have what they call uh, tips of the week. And be sure to check those out because there's uh, plenty full of information and 
uh, gotchas and scenarios and good advice on designing APIs and consuming types. And wouldn't you know, the very first tip on that, <laughs> tips of the week in AppSale is about string views. So that definitely caught my attention. So if we go back to our standard vocabulary type of string view and try to make sense of its definition and its purpose, uh, we basically determined that it's, it's an object that can re refer to a constant continuous sequence of characters and the keyword here being a constant sequence. Basically, conceptually, is, is a pointer and a size, so it's a very simple, very simple structure underneath. And it has, intentionally, the same interface as standard string, the constant parts anyway, plus some utility, utility specific to moving a view throughout a buffer, like removing a prefix or a suffix. Um, it's a lightweight string-like view of our, over an array of characters and be con can be constructed from a pointer and a length. And it's friendly with string literals and it can be used in context per context. It actually, it's, this is one of its design goals to be used to process uh, strings at compile time as well. And its main goal is to avoid and minimize the use of copies of strings. And it was designed to interoperate with standard string, and this is a blessing as well as a problem, as we'll see later on in the talk. And although it's meant to be a kind of a, a glue code, um, kind of utility, it ends up being kind of a dangerous vocabulary type if you don't know exactly uh, the, the proper usage scenarios and the gotchas that come along with this. So we'll have to explore some of these together. Um, why are we are trying to avoid temporary string objects? Well, uh, they're not exactly small. Uh, they can cause memory allocations. In most scenarios, you can get away with small string optimization and maybe uh, even with uh, copy lesion. Uh, in certain scenarios, but in general, it's not something that's desirable. There are plentiful of scenarios where uh, unnecessary copies do happen and without uh, us knowing about it. So string view does not manage uh, the storage it refers to. This is by design. The lifetime of uh, the object, the string buffer itself, is at the responsibility of the caller. So the string view, it's, it's not an owning object. And this is a very profound, uh, has very profound implications about its usage and the fact that it, as, a, as an interface and as a designed type, it actually tries to behave like a, like a regular type. Um, so when would we want to use a string view instead of a standard string? So first, in order to understand this, let's try to examine um, modes in which we can construct strings, uh, string views. We can construct it by uh, copy, uh, b via a um, uh, pointer to characters and a size, and it has this FESCI constructor that can initialize from a null term terminating sequence of uh, characters. And this constructor is not cheap. It actually has to calculate the length of the, that buffer. So this is a linear operation. And it might happen at compile time if that string it, it's known at compile time. For example, if we're in a context per context or we're dealing with string literals. But in most scenarios, it might not be. So this, although this constructor is very happy to accept uh, and construct a string view for you, it's actually a very costly operation in terms of what string view is trying to achieve in that it tries to avoid costly operations. And we do have some modifications to the standard string to interoperate properly with string view. Uh, for example, it has an operator that tries to construct a, a string view, convert it to a string view. And it's basically constructed as 
data plus size. Nothing complicated here. And if, if we try to pull everything together and see the complete picture of uh, the interoperability between standard string and standard string view, we get this set of properties that a string automatically, uh, 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 pointer to characters automatically converts to a string via a constructor that's not explicit. It automatically converts to a string view, again, via a constructor that's not explicit, very important. A standard string automatically converts to a string view via conversion operator. And you can construct a standard string from a string view via a constructor that is explicit. And this part is important. We'll see uh, details a little bit later. So a little thought on storing string views, because you actually can. Um, storing string views, uh, short answer would be very dangerous, don't do it. Because you can end up holding a reference to freed memory. So basically a dangling reference. And we can see a sim very simple example here. Uh, we have a vector of string views and we have a save function that uh, receives a, let's say this function has a prototype that was designed previously and is, it is using string ref at, uh, throughout its interface. And we store uh, this reference to the string in the vector of string views. We get, we, this is done via an automatic conversion because of the constructors we previously saw. And we get no compiler warning here. And basically we end up storing a, a dangling reference to some string that might go out of scope of, of the application. What about the other way around? If we, we are storing standard string and we receive them through string views as function parameters. That sounds much more safe to use. Uh, should that work? Let's say we use a standard map from standard string to int and we store some uh, keyword frequencies. Very basic stuff. Well, this very basic thing of uh, retrieving the frequency of a given keyword doesn't actually compile. You would expect it to work, but it doesn't because there is, e there is no conversion to standard string here. So this actually doesn't compile. But if we do provide standard map with a transparent comparator, like standard less, um, and we do implement get frequency for keyword, a little bit different, we can search for the keyword and if we find it, return its frequency. Let's see how this works. Well, uh, the find member function from standard map uses operator less than for string views and this comes in the box. So standard library actually provides utilities such as comparison operators for lexicographic compare of string views. And this is invoked by the find function in the standard map. And we're hoping that our compiler can help us here. And uh, by the way, uh, forgot to ask, uh, is everyone following this example? I, I know it's a little bit too much code, but hopefully the, the construction and the operations are okay. Do feel free to ask questions, yeah? Uh, it's different when you use a standard, uh, when, when you use a transparent comparator. So uh, this situation is different from this situation when you define the standard map without the transparent comparator. Yeah. So do feel free to interrupt me and ask questions uh, on any slide if there are something that's, if there's something that's unclear or I s uh, skipped over too, too quickly over something. Uh, okay, so in general, we, tend, uh, we try to rely on our compiler to help us and give us proper warnings uh, when things might fail or 
if we're doing improper usage or if we're in a danger of hang, uh, hanging on to some dangling uh, reference. And we hope that the compiler will catch that and warn us about things like that. And let's see another example. Um, this is um, an idiom that got popular in, in the last few years. Uh, it's what people call the sync idiom, like uh, if you're planning on storing some value that you receive in your constructor and uh, you want to handle uh, all kinds of uh, combinations of binding that parameter to L values or R values uh, because of the combinatorial nature of those uh, parameters in the constructor, you tend to use the, this pattern of actually moving the, the, the given parameter into your stored uh, slot or for your class. Uh, that's why it's called a sync pattern or idiom, whatever. So if we try to do this with a standard string view, for example, we construct this sync with a string view and we are storing the, the, the string value, we plan to store the string value, we will have to store it as a standard string and if, if we actually try to uh, move this uh, string view in our stored string, uh, we're hoping to get away with this. So what do you think? Is this okay? Should it work? Does it compile? Why? Why? Uh, the original string, you mean? Yeah. The source? Yeah, the fact that you moved into the thing, the R value reference of the standard string, you had it, it's lost. Yeah, but uh, in our, construct our constructor never mentions standard string, so we, we don't know the source of that string. Might be a string literal, might be an actual standard string, so we we'll lost that information. So what ends up being generated here? So first of all, let's make sure that everybody's on board. Uh, it does compile. <laughs> um, and, but we have to examine that, cons that um, special constructor that I mentioned earlier. Uh, and we're now talking about uh, a constructor that has been added to standard string, not string view. You see, it's very confusing. I keep mentioning string, string view. Uh, with the changes and uh, the functionality added for string view in C++ 17, the standard string class was modified as well. So this is causing confusion, maybe. And um, although it's meant to help inter interop between these types, sometimes, uh, sometimes it, it gets in your way, and things become quite uh, quite unpleasant. So let's examine this constructor. So th this is a special constructor. It's an explicit constructor like I mentioned earlier. And it's t a templated constructor. Let's ignore the allocator part because we don't care about that right now. And this constructor is actually visible if T is convertible to a string view to initialize the string with. So this basically means that uh, it implicitly converts T to a string view as if we would write that string view SV equals T, so as if we write that. And it initializes the string and converts it like using the data and the size, the buffer and its size. But the key thing here is that this constructor is actually visible only if T is convertible to a string view. So if that argument is a string-like thing, we don't know exactly what it is, but if that thing is convertible, as if we would write uh, that line there, uh, like we would initialize it with uh, a string view with it, so if that entity is something that behaves or is convertible to a string view, then this, com uh, this constructor kicks in. And this is a constructor in the standard string class. So if we go back to this example, 
we have we move the, the, the string view in the, in the string itself, and the string constructor does accept this because the smoothed string view is something like a string view. It is a string view. So that constructor for standard string kicks in, and this does compile. But this is not something that, uh, first of all, uh, I had to spend too many minutes explaining it, so definitely not something that's pleasant to see or intuitive, and you don't want to have this uh, mental challenge every time you see a pattern like this. And it's potentially unsafe because you don't know what's happening to the source of the actual string. So although it compiles, you should try to always avoid to use a string view to initialize a string member. Keyword being here, string member. So if you plan to hold on to it, try to avoid constructing it from a string view because you have no control over the call site and the source of that string. And although the proper uh, constructor kicks in and it does compile, you end up in a potential mess. Potential. Might work, might not work. It, it will, it will. But if, if that string is still the, the original source string from which we pass the string view, still exists. So it might actually fail at construction. Go ahead. So, it tries to do a tip copy, but if that string view doesn't, uh, it's, string, the string view is basically like a, a reference, basically. Although it tries to behave like a value type, we'll examine this a little bit later when we examine it as a proper type, as a vocabulary type, and we see if, it, is it really regular in terms of algorithms and the, the concepts required. So. It, it's deceivingly regular, and it tries to fool you like it's a value type, but behind the scenes is, is a no owning type. And it, it will try to construct that string from the string view, but if the string view didn't extend, the string view doesn't extend the lifetime of the source. So if the, the source is not longer avail no longer available, it will fail to construct the string. You can never know. If, if the caller passed an actual standard string in there, it works. But if the, the, if the caller used some kind of call chain, if that was an indirect uh, re receiving of that buffer throughout some mix of string and string views, this is exactly the point I'm trying to make uh, right to the very bottom of this slide. Uh, if so, this is the point I'm trying to make. If you're if you're mixing along a call chain, uh, passing the string as string or string view along the way, and you end up storing the standard string, then you're in trouble. So, if you do actually plan to end up with a standard string somewhere along the route, as storing it, for say in, in a container or as a member. Try to avoid mixing strings and string views because at some point you might be, end up in the situation where the string by construction is no longer guaranteed to be available, the original string. Yeah, go. Yeah. Uh, the question was, uh, in this example with the sync, the, the STD move doesn't actually do, uh, doesn't actually buy us anything here. Right. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, but it's in, uh, the, the, the reason I'm mentioning it is because this kind of pattern became idiomatic for uh, values passed in constructors. So if, if this were a standard string, we would consider this an acceptable behavior. So if uh, our sync would uh, receive a, a standard string by value, we would move it inside our standard string, and this is a proper, efficient implementation. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I'm, I'm afraid that I, I still don't follow how, how this can wind up being a problem. Because, because people trust guarantees that the, arg the arguments 
uh, the actual argument is that their passive constructor won't be destroyed until the constructor is done executing. Uh, so I, I, sure. I don't see, I don't see how uh, I don't see how the string can wind up going to the next string. It it depends uh, how far apart is the standard string of source with regards to this constructor. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's basically the same problem with a reference, but in most situations, uh, an L value reference extends the lifetime of a temporary. For example, if, if you're, you're doing it from, from a temporary standard string. But, but an L value reference parameter does not extend lifetime. In, in these situations, no, no. But imagine you have multiple call chains like this. So this is not a that's first function invocated. It's not exactly like an L-value reference. In, the main difference being, and I show this in a later slide, is that it doesn't extend the lifetime of a temporary, but which a, an L-value reference does. Not in this context. In, in, in this context, it depends on the actual source and on, on how you end up here. Yeah. I, I think we're uh, maybe we should talk this one-on-one uh, -on -one after, because the others might get bored. <laughs> So do, uh, do reach out to me after we finish and we will examine this further. Well, thanks for the question anyway. Um, so where were we? Where were we? So yeah, here. So if you're planning to end up uh, storing the standard string view uh, and your callers might not be aware of this. this, this is where the problem comes in because you're designing a parts of the application in isolation. For example, uh, you, I, I am designing a component that wants to hang on to some string buffer and uh, the, the caller and the user, the consumer of uh, my component has no way of knowing that I try to hang on to that original um, string or not. So it's kind of a, a, a disconnect kind of problem in terms of um, components being designed, designed separately, and if you're trying to mix them up, you might, you might end up in trouble or not. So, um, going back to the theme of compiler trying to help us, help us, surely there are at least static analysis uh, checks that would catch these kind of situations and warn us. So, um, how many of you have used Clang Tidy? at least for static analysis. Cool, cool. So this is an op excellent opportunity for me to plug this wonderful open source project <laughs> uh, I've been involved with for the past year, uh, that is Clang Power Tools. And this basically brings all the uh, magic of uh, tidy and checks and static analysis and format and everything to the Visual Studio IDE. And uh, it's a free extension for Visual Studio and then it's open source if you want to check it out. So, Clang Tidy provides over 250 checks for various kind of things and static analysis and modernizers and, and alike. So if we try to examine older string related checks, very good stuff in there. Um, apparently, at first, uh, first, first can, nothing related to string view. That, is, that was very disappointing. Um, but if you look carefully, there is a check. It's just in a more general context. And it's called bug prone dangling handle. Very intuitive name. Uh, I actually looked for something related to string view and couldn't find anything. But if you look careful, this actual check can detect dangling references in value handles like string view. So it's a more general uh, check, but it's basically implemented for string views. And the keyword here being it can detect references that can result from constructing handles from temporary reference, uh, temporary values when those temporaries are soon destroyed after they're bound to. The keyword here being soon, because in more complicated situations, this check will not help you. A very recent development, like 
three days ago, um, Herb Satter published uh, a, new, a new article on lifetime profile uh, 1.0, and we we hope to hear more about this uh, in the following months. And there is a a check for uh, a dangling string view because it's in, it's important as it turns out as we see, as we've seen earlier, it's very easy to convert a string to a string view and end up with a dangling uh, reference and uh, basically undefined behavior. And this uh, is going to be a part of the CPP core guidelines and checks will help with this. So if we examine uh, the very uh, sample that uh, Herb mentions in this article, if we have a string view initialized with a string string view literal, and we try to get the first character out of that string view, we immediately have an error because the, the actual string view was uh, destroyed on line A. And if we do have, if, if we run an, a compiler which does support this checker, we get a warning with, uh, for example, clang w lifetime switch. You get a warning that passing a dangling pointer as argument uh, in uh, line s index zero. So, very helpful warning. Pinpoints the exact problem. Again, it's a very contrived example. In real situations, uh, scenarios are not that simple. And going back to what I uh, mentioned earlier um, about conceptually string views and uh, constring ref, basically almost the same thing. Uh, one main difference uh, would be that uh, string views do not extend the lifetime of temporaries. And this ends up being um, something rather unexpected for people that uh, mentally try to map the behavior of string view as a const string ref replacement. So you shouldn't rely on lifetime ex extension anyway, and um, rather know when copies are or not generated. And be aware of copy elision and uh, RVO and small string optimization in general. Um, regarding string literals, um, uh, what do you think will print for S1 and S2 here? Care to guess? Isn't that hard? Three and eight? Okay, other opinions? <laughs> Let's see. Can everybody see the, the output? Yeah. Let's make it a little bit more clear. Oh, look at that, three. Uh, and four, S2. Okay, so we have a winner. Okay, going back. What about if we want a null terminated string? Would you consider this an acceptable implementation for string views? Would you want to use something like this? Yeah? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't want this in my code. Um, so, after investigating all the gotchas and the issues and I, I still, was determined that I wanted some string view in my life and uh, the, wanted to benefit from some kind of cleanup in my glue code uh, when mixing uh, platform independent and platform specific stuff in my application. And a year, a year ago, I went to this talk right here at this conference and I saw Nico point out pretty disturbing stuff about string views and 
uh, we had quotes, quotes like, string view is a nightmare, string view is worse than a string ref, and string view sem is a semantically a string ref, but concept conceptually a value type. So I was very, very disappointed. Uh, I, I almost gave up. Uh, I am gonna reiterate a very simple example that he showed uh, a year ago here. Uh, for example, you have a template function that returns, that doubles a value, and be aware that we do have an operator that takes two string views, a plus operator that takes two string views and returns a standard string. So this is in the standard library. So if we try to do a double from a string view and store it using auto, here, we do end up with a runtime error. Does anyone know why? Yep? Exactly, so because of auto here, uh, basically this would be the takeaway. Don't, don't assign to auto, and uh, Nico, Nico goes as far as saying that uh, almost always auto is, based, is broken because of string view, and because string view is, is gonna be a popular vocabulary type in use. And uh, let's, let's see. So I do have the, the, the example again. So if we're using, uh, let, let me go back to the, the previous sample. It, because the return type of double is T, and we pass in a string view to the double function, t ends up being a string view. And because operator plus returns a standard string, we end up with a string view reference to a temporary string resulting from that plus operator. So it's a string view holding on to a temporary string of the plus operation. So that's the, that's the problem here. And if we fix it and change the signature of the double function to return auto, then in this situation, uh, R becomes a standard string now, and it can hold on to the temporary result of the plus operation that is a string. So very subtle thing, and very easy to mess up because of auto, basically. Uh, Many other issues with string views, and very smart people are trying to fix them uh, through the C++ committee and trying to figure out uh, ways to improve the situation and maybe fix some of the things for C++20. I'm not very optimistic about this. Uh, this is one of the papers related to this. And by the way, very recently, uh, the last meeting, I think that this, this is what the, was the last meeting, uh, a very sensitive issue of constructing a string view from a null pointer was discussed, and after, m you would think this is a simple thing. Turns out it's not. Uh, and after much deliberation, uh, the common s conclusion was that uh, they'll just leave it unchanged, like, and right now this is undefined behavior. So, Yeah. If, if you construct a standard string from a null pointer, it's a different thing. Uh, okay. So, yeah, it's not as simple as it seems. So a few months passed uh, since CppCon of last year and uh, I ended up at uh, meeting C++ in Berlin and I saw a much more optimistic talk on string views about the author of Q string view from Qt library. And the, the talk was much more um, embracing the, the advantages of uh, string views and the benefits and if you try to stay along the good path, uh, you might be en end up in a, in a better place. So I was much more optimistic about it uh, after seeing that talk and I'm, I'm still torn and I, I, I almost feel like I can do this and I can uh, let myself uh, down this path of embracing string view 
uh, and using it throughout the application, but uh, I'm still torn. But hopefully, there are others there to help. Um, we're starting to see a rollout of uh, several good um, pieces out there uh, in the ecosystem and in investigations uh, around the gotchas and the good practices around using string views and staying away from the bad stuff. Um, for example, I'll give a shout out to uh, an excellent article by Jonathan Mueller on string views. Um, there's a related topic, not explicitly about string views, but about uh, strings competing constructors. Uh, there's also performance issues, and uh, Bartek did a, a wonderful uh, set of benchmarks and analyzed certain situations to see exactly where the benefits of using string views kick in. Bear in mind that we do see a lot of uh, gains from small string optimizations and copy lesions in most situations. So uh, the benefits of string views are not always as visible in practice as you might imagine. And of course, I have to give a shout out to Billy here in the room <laughs> uh, for uh, the wonderfully titled article. And I think that the, the title summarizes perfectly what I'm trying to deliver here. It is a duck type. Uh, for strings, especially if you're working on a platform with so many uh, exotic and different string types. If we're talking just about COM, it's complicated enough. And uh, Arthur Roadwire, uh, which makes a very um, nice analysis about string view as a value type and tries to point out that uh, string view is not actually a value type, al although it's deceivingly so. Uh, and it tries to fool us uh, as being a drop-in replacement for a constring ref for parameters. The problem being that it's neither a reference type or an object type, nor a proper value type. So he's calling this a borrow type. And uh, I think the terminology is, was previously coined in Rust, I think, if I'm not mistaken, but uh, anyway, I like the terminology. So uh, if we're using some, ki some kind of uh, reference type that it's passed along as a value, um, so the problem with barrow types is the lack of ownership and the fact that they generally are short-lived and um, they can generally do without an assignment operator and you should try to restrict the usage only in function parameter lists and avoid storing them in any way. And there are similarities um, as with string view. The problem is much more, uh, much, much worse with uh, standard span that's coming in C++ 20 because uh, we're no longer talking about a, a constant uh, sequence that we're referring to. You can actually modify. The, the thing behind the span. So the problem becomes, becomes even, even worse in C20. So you do need contextual information around that string view. Um, things you need to consider is uh, do we perform shallow, shallow copies? Do we perform deep comparisons? Uh, is it mutable or not? For example, string view is not, span is. Uh, does it provide an operator? Uh, a, compar a comparison operator or not? Should it provide a comparison operator or not? These are the questions that uh, come frequently when discussing span, for example. So, um, problem with string view, uh, these kind of borrow types are not exactly new. There are throughout the standard library already, but they're more exotic types. Problem, the problem with string view is that it has the potential to become a mainstream vocabulary type. And it's very tempting to use and is deceptively simple. And this is the, uh, where I believe the problem relies, the fact that it's, uh, it's much more appealing than other borrow-like types in the standard library. So mind you that a string view is assignable and assign assignment has shallow semantics, but comparison has deep semantics. It actually does 
the lexicographic compare of the underlying strings. So there are subtle differences there, and this um, non owning reference type uh, isn't exactly regular in this regard. So it looks, it almost looks regular if you try to analyze the, uh, the requirements and its behavior, but it's not actually regular. But being constant helps. So in general, it, when used properly, um, restricting ourselves just to function parameters, uh, its usage is okay, and we can almost squint and see it as a regular type, although it's not. So general problem with reference types, uh, no non-opening reference type like string view or span, equality operator, of course. So if we try to restrict these types to semi-regular and call them as they are and not pretend that string view is a proper regular type, might actually help, in, uh, help us understand and manage expectations better. And again, if we're talking about C++ 20 and what's to come, standard span is like an array view similar to string view, but to mutable underlying data. And I do have um, some resources related to this, and I'm actually uh, brazing uh, this point again. I do have a, a talk tomorrow about regular types, and I go much deeper into analyzing the consequences of designing proper regular types and using them, and meeting ex the expectations of the, the callers and the, the users of the consumers of your uh, components. And I do analyze string view in the context, in a much larger context of uh, regular types, and I uh, also discuss the parallels and the differences between string view and span in this regard. So there are uh, some resources there uh, if you want to consume further on, uh, resources on regular type, and of course, uh, the talk I'm giving tomorrow, and um, tomorrow I'm not gonna focus on the gotchas of string view, but uh, actually analyze the, its proper semantics in the context of STL algorithms and uh, requirements on types and uh, uniform interfaces and uh, and the like. And I would summarize with some rules. So if we you end up uh, straying from the main recommendations regarding uh, borrow types or string-like reference types, uh, try to be explicit about it and properly document uh, such APIs that you designed. And if you're ending up returning some string view because you need to or because you know you're processing your, I don't know, um, in context per context or processing uh, uh, string literals or something like that. Be sure to properly annotate your functions and properly document the potential problems there so that the caller uh, might not be caught off guard and uh, the expect his expectations are met and try try to avoid uh, confusing the caller by using something that looks like a value, but it's not. And why not? You can use some custom attributes if you need to, to properly decorate your functions in situations where you, you might want to avoid offending the, your users. And I think I will conclude with um, one older article about string view, one that I enjoyed very much uh, by Marco Arena. And I think he said it best, uh, string view, odi et amo, uh, I hate you and I want you. That's kind of my feeling regards, uh, regarding string view and I'm still determined to, uh, to use it. So not very optimistic, but still determined. <laughs> so um, that's why I think uh, we have enough string view to hang ourselves and thank you. I do have a few minutes for questions. If you line up to the mic. Hi, um, uh, would you mind going back to the, uh, the example with operator plus? Operator plus, sure. You mean Nico's example? Yes. Uh, uh, the one with the fix or the one uh, before? Uh, uh, either one is fine. Okay. Um, I, would, uh, uh, I would make the observation, I draw a different conclusion from this example 
which yeah. is that you shouldn't overload operators for types you don't own. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's that's essentially where this goes wrong. Is that double is expecting operator plus to be well behaved, but yeah. here somebody has written a bad operator plus. There's a reason string view doesn't have this operator. Yeah. So I, I think that's all that this example really shows. You're saying it does have it, though, right? Sorry. The, no. the plus operator is standard. That's what you said, right? No. Or did somebody write that? That that, that operator plus is is from is Nico's example. It's not yeah. in the standard. It's not. Okay. Hopefully. So much happier, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but if if you would implement something like this, you would have to return a standard string because you have to return the result of the concatenation. Yeah, but uh, I agree with you that it's not the most uh, proper thing to do. So yeah. you shouldn't design something like this. It's a contrived example, but it makes the point that uh, unexpected conversions do happen, and hiding them behind auto is a dangerous thing. That's true. But I agree, I agree with you, I wouldn't want to see this. <laughs> yeah. With or without auto. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to make the observation that the, uh, the question of semantics of owning versus borrow and that uh -huh. kind of stuff gets even much worse when you look at ranges TS and you look at the, the wild world of the zoo of views, which are fantastic but, but are similarly uh, questionable in terms of lifetime. And, and My view on that, pun intended, <laughs> is that uh, when I think of ranges, I think of iterator pairs and I don't view them as value types right. at all. So I don't expect to, to uh, see a range and uh, pretend that I copied that range just by referencing it in, a, in, a, in a, some expression. So unless I see a, an explicit copy algorithm there, I don't expect that range to be hold on to. Right. So, so maybe in the future when- uh, At least for me. Yeah, when people are used to the views from ranges and whatever type that is, if it's a borrow type or whatever, string view should fit into that category, not the more regular category. Uh, I would be more worried about span, actually. I, I'm much more comfortable with string view, and I, I could almost uh, squint and pretend it's okay, uh, but uh, I'm much more worried about span. And that's coming, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Hi there, can you go back to the string view of null putter? Slide. Oh my god. <laughs> I hope I can find it. Uh, you can pass no, it. I passed it. Yep. So, are you claiming that std string would be any different in this example? I'm not claiming it's better. Um, okay. Like, the, this causes UB for both std string and for string view. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, w would you expect to, to end up with an empty string here? Do you I prefer, do you actually prefer? calling Sterlin on null putter to be undefined behavior. Yes. <laughs> and that's what you asked to do. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not sure there's a, a better solution sure. here. I, I'm not we, claiming. We can argue. I, the, no. the point I just want to make sure of: this is not different between string and string. We could. There's uh, there's the value question of should the, I do this? Uh, yeah, and it's it's very tricky to to fall down the 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 path of uh, exceptions here. For example, uh, should I be comfortable in string view or string issuing an exception here? But then you would have to think about. Uh, the scenarios where you, you're restricted and not being able to use that. All, all I'm saying that I want, want to make sure is understood here is if you change this to string, to, as of today, mm -hmm. you would not get different behavior. Yeah, I agree with you there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Any more questions? You're just stretching or? <laughs> Uh, the question was, what's the benefit of string views after all this discussion? <laughs> uh, so, avoiding copies. So, uh, most situations, you, you should really uh, uh, check out this article uh, uh, by Bartosz, uh, Bartek. Uh, let me see, where is it? Uh, I'm skipping really fast, this one. So, definitely um, take a picture of that or uh, uh, um, write down the, the URL. So uh, 
Bartex uh, analyzes here many situations and does some micro benchmarks and I'm not claiming they're excellent and they cover every kind of scenario there, but you do see advantages in certain scenarios even though you have small string optimization kicking in and copy lesion in most situations. So you, sh you should be okay even without string view in most cases. But think about uh, context, per context per context and using uh, string functions, for example, st uh, same functions from as in standard string in context per context, or for example, in, on string literals. Can you go to the sync slide? The? The slide that shows the sync. Sync, sync, With sync. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't do anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sync, 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 sync. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so in one of the later slides, you, you said that it's okay to use the string view as a parameter to a function. And yeah. That was back here. Yeah. So the, the only problem I see in this slide is that the, the sync is not a syntax. The name of the class is back. <laughs> I, I, I designed the, so the, I, behavior, no I must repeat the question. So uh, you're, you're more like an observation. Yeah. Yeah, your observation here is that uh, I deceivingly named the class sync, although this is not exactly a sync pattern here. And I did that on purpose. Yeah, uh, uh, the advice, the general advice is uh, restrict using string views as par parameters. But the pitfall here is that you actually try to store it. So that's the, the one of the gotchas, don't store it. So when you get it as a parameter, you can do anything with it, right? If you store it, you can not store it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're, uh, you're, we're a little over uh, the time. Uh, we can discuss this uh, one on one. I'm around, so do catch me. Thank you.